What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny and I am that props girl. And I thought that I would do something a little bit different with my channel. And I'm interested to see how you guys like this as I'm considering taking my channel in a little bit of a different direction. So this is a bit of a taster for you guys. So I often talk about design and I obviously show you guys how I make props. And design for theater is something that I'm so, so passionate about. It is. Oh, it is something that I absolutely love. In particular, set and scenic design is my specialty and it's where my eyes are automatically drawn to uh, in any show. So I wanted to talk about a show that I recently saw in Sydney. I saw the professional production of Agatha Christie's Mousetrap and oh my gosh, it was absolutely incredible. And I'm not going to give away any plot spoilers. So if you haven't seen the show and you want to, don't fear about that. But what I am wanting to talk to you about is the scenic design because I was blown away by the incredible design of the show. We're just going to be having a bit of a chill chit chat. Uh, I've got my coffee here and we are ready to just have some, some chats about design. So if you are keen to see that thin stick around, be sure to smash that like button as it lets me know you want to see more content like this, as well as consider hitting the subscribe button and bell so that you don't miss a single one of my uploads. With all that said and done, let's jump straight into this video. All right, so I have my laptop off to the side here. I did a little bit of background research into Mousetrap and I found out that it began as a radio play written as a birthday present for Queen Mary, uh, who is the consort to George V, uh, sorry, King George V, and was broadcast in 1947. Now, I have been an Agatha Christie fan since I can remember. Like, honestly, I've been an Agatha Christie fan since I was a child. I think I watched my first Poirot with my grandparents. Oh, gosh, I can't even remember. But it was a long time, since I was at least 10 or 11. Um, and there's just something about the whodunits that just, oh, it just gets me. But the thing about an Agatha Christie is it always has a certain style. And you can always tell um, through the writing style of Agatha Christie, but also the the scenic design is very, very specific. I know it would be interesting to see an appropriation and put into modern forms, but the way that it has to be staged, like when I watch an Agatha Christie in a movie form, for example, you know, you're expecting the... 1920s, 1930s, 1940s architecture. You're expecting the older design styles. And that's what was so cool when you walked in and you saw the set and it was, it was like I was looking at an old house. It was so incredibly realistic. And I've said this in other videos before that the design is so crucial in your audience believing that they are there with your actor. It's not important in every show, but for this show, it was so integral for us to believe and become immersed in that world. And I think that the best thing about proper props and set dressing, and I have said this so many times, is that if it's done correctly, it shouldn't look like a props designer has come in and done their job. It should just look right. And that's exactly what this did. It looked so right. And I was like, yes, this is exactly what I'm expecting for this time period, this era, this style of writing. This is exactly what I think is required. So props to that. Pardon the pun there, but it was amazing. The play has also been running for 60 years. Like, what? It's incredible. This is an enormous amount of time for a play to be running. Um, like, you know, Phantom on Broadway has run for a very long time. And, you know, I, I know that there's a whole thing about those shows closing at the moment. We're not going to even talk about that. But I just find it incredible that a play, a play has run this long. I saw it at the Theatre Royal, which if you haven't been to the Theatre Royal in Sydney, it is a two-story theatre. So there is a dress circle and then you have the stalls. So the dress circle is extremely steep and it has a proscenium arch um, stage. So it's pretty standard sort of stage and design. You see it in a lot of theatre houses. So it was a very, very tall set. So the walls were extremely high. And what I love about that is the fact that I feel like sometimes sets can stop for the limitation of the proscenium march. And sometimes they can feel like there's a lid on it. And this didn't. Like the grandeur of the house, like houses in those days, they had 10, 12, 16 foot ceilings. 
and because they made the wall so high you felt the grandeur of this house so you could tell right from the get-go this is a house with some form of money they're not poor like they may not be rich but they're not poor the detailing in the paneling so a lot of the houses back then they had woodwork paneling and so many companies might just paint paneling on which of course you can do which is a great way to save money but this show didn't they had actual paneling which was incredible and so you could see the depth you could see all of that. And theater is a funny thing that sometimes, you know, there's no need to do that because a scenic artist can come in and they can fake it. And 100%, we all do that. But it's just amazing when you get like a real thing. And I, I know for myself, like when I give someone a prop and I'm like, that's a real typewriter, they're like, oh my gosh, like, wow. Like, thank you. It's, it's a privilege to have something that's not fake because theater is all smoke and mirrors. But this show did not feel like it was smoke and mirrors at all. I want to talk about the detailing over the mantelpiece now from where I was sitting I couldn't see um the mantelpiece in full like I could see that there was stuff on it but like you know seeing it in photos is 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 the same well it's not the same but you know and I appreciate the fact that they've gone to the effort of not just having a couple of things on this mantelpiece they have put plates they have put uh, lamps like sconces on the walls they have got a portrait they've got a clock it's it's all these little things the knick-knacky things that people do have on their mantelpieces it's those details that make you believe that this house is lived in that this is someone's home and i really love that because i think they they weren't allowing it to have this sense of of staleness and as i'm not going to give away spoilers but this the um the house itself is being used as like a hotel so Obviously there's a balance between hotel, but also home that the owners live in. And I think that they really balanced it quite well because you did have personal effects to the side. So there was kind of like a, I don't know what it's called, but like a, a buffet or there is another word for it. I can't remember it right now, but like off to the side, kind of like a, a sideboard, I guess, or a bureau where there was like a phone and pens and like stationery and that sort of thing. So you do you do have like personal sort of items there. And then off to the other side, um, you had the personal items on the fireplace. And I think that that was quite well balanced because it was on either side of the stage, which is, which is particularly cool. The center of the stage was interesting too, because you had this beautiful window, which was also very tall. You had like nine panes of glass. I'm sure it's not glass. I'm sure it is hundred percent fake, but you know, standing glass and the detailing on that was really cool as well because it wasn't just straight glass like a french window uh it had you know bits of stained glass which again it's that whole old style people don't do that anymore because it's expensive but that sort of expense you would use to build your window your house your this your that those sorts of things you expect to see in a house like this it's those details that it looks right i believe that this house is expensive you could tell by the rich texture of the wood you could tell by the red carpeted floor from the stonework and I know the stonework wasn't real there's no way but it looked real there is stonework in the entryway on the stairs there is stonework I know it's probably just painted wood whatever it looks so realistic and that is exactly what you expect in a house of that era also in the middle it was cool because you had this beautiful framing you had three separate items so you had like a doorway on one side which went up the stairs and then the window and then on the other side of the doorway there was another entrance that was like the foyer to the house and it was just it was framed so well because it was like a trapezium sort of style but the like the three frames sort of broke up the set nicely so it wasn't just wall upon wall upon wall and that was really really clever and it was a great way to to put in different areas that the actors could enter and exit out of because almost like fast there needed to be a lot of entrances and exits and I think that's really important in a lot of whodunits as well because you know there's it's got to be places for people to escape to and I'm always really fascinated by hidden entrances and the really cool thing is that the windows the bottom one actually opened out and so it, it was used as an entry point and then you had these beautiful curtains which closed over it and those curtains even the curtains looked rich and like you can tell because you could tell by the quality of the fabric the texture of the fabric like velour and velvet has a very very specific um look to it and again it just it adds grandeur another thing that i really loved about this production was that they weren't afraid to 
incorporate um, lamps in their set. And whether they use wireless DMX or wired DMX, it doesn't matter. The fact that the sconces worked, so the lights are on the walls, they all worked. The lamp, it turned on. I know this is a professional production, but it's these little details that if you can incorporate them into your um, community theatre, amateur theatre, pro-am theatre, it just, it raises the bar. And I really think often some of the small differences between a show being at a professional level, sometimes they do come down to design. Like, I mean, so many people think that it's about quality of the acting, but the quality of the design is so important and you can't just overlook a certain department um, and expect it to be as good as a professional company because professional companies, look at this. It was really, really humbling to watch the show and just go, yeah, this is incredible. And I I absolutely love this. It would be amazing to be a part of this and, and to see a show like this, oh, it's incredible. I also appreciate the fact that, and I don't know if it was on purpose, but so the show is set in winter and the theatre was so cold. Oh my gosh. Like I was seeing this in spring. We weren't like wearing jumpers and we were all freezing. And I don't know if that's, you know, for the actor's benefit, if it was just to make you feel like you're in winter, but oh my gosh, the atmospherics. It was so dang cold in the theatre. All right, I'm back. This is actually a couple of hours later because I realized I forgot that I wanted to mention that behind the window, so like, you know, you're looking out the window, it was snowing, which was such a nice little, little additive to just add to the narrative to say like, yes, you know, we can see they're wearing coats. We can see all those sorts of things. Yes, the theater is really cold, but having the snow as an added effect is, it just, you know, it helps you believe that you're there and that it is actually the dead of winter. Um, and obviously, you know, that's a budgetary thing and, you know, you can't always afford fake snow. Um, you could maybe do it in like how the play that goes wrong, they're just tossing newspaper around. But it was, it was really, really cool to see that. But not only that, not only was it snowing outside, they also continued that on because when the actors came in from outside, they had the snow on their costumes and they were brushing it off. And it's just, again, those little details that really make such a big impact and a difference. But I also appreciate the fact that they, you know, they put something in the fireplace. Again, it's these little details that I, I know I harm on about, but it's not just for the audience. It's also for the actors. It helps you lose yourself in that environment. And oh, I know it's not always important, but sometimes those little details, they matter. Not to everyone, but they, they matter to me. One thing that's also, you know, really, really specific in those sorts of old houses is the furnishings. And it's really, really tricky because you expect to see press studded furniture and that sort of furniture is hard to find. Your textures and all those things, they're really important and they absolutely nailed them because the chairs were correct, the carpet was correct, the curtains were correct. Everything was like chef's kiss perfect. And it really goes to show that I know this show has been running for a long time, but also whoever designed this did a lot of research. Um, Cause I've seen the set um, across a couple of different productions and it has changed, but whoever designed the Australian production, well done. Cause I can't fault it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you found this interesting and if it's something that you're interested in seeing more of, cause I had a lot of fun filming it. Be sure to smash the like button if you did and hit the subscribe button and bell and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.